The 2008 season was one of the most memorable in Formula 1 history. It was full of drama and controversy, the rise of new stars and the decline of old ones, and an epic battle for the championship between Felipe Massa and Lewis Hamilton that wasn't resolved until the last corner of the last lap of the last race. Four different drivers led the championship at one time or another, but how would things look if the season was run in reverse, with the Brazilian Grand Prix being the season opener and the Australian Grand Prix being the season finale? Obviously, it goes without saying that the end result remains the same, with Lewis Hamilton winning the Drivers' Championship by one point from Felipe Massa and Ferrari winning the Constructors' Championship by 21 points from McLaren but it does drastically alter the trajectory of the two respective title fights and gives a new perspective on where championships can be won and lost. This is the first video in a new series where I shall cover various Formula 1 seasons in this manner. As I'm essentially running time in reverse and cannot change any outcomes, a bit of artistic license will have to be taken with historical facts, particularly pertaining to seasons that had driver deaths. 2008, fortunately, is not one that did, and there were also no driver changes or transfers, if you ignore the collapse of Super Aguri four races in, so this is a fairly easy starting point. With that out of the way, let's see how the 2008 Formula 1 season looks when run in reverse. So, after intense speculation around who has cracked the code following the ban of traction control and engine braking for 2008, 10 teams travelled down to Sao Paulo for the opening round of the season. There would have been 11, but Super Aguri suffer a near total financial collapse over the winter, but pledge to make a return later in the season. Nelson Piquet Jr. and Sebastian Bourdais are both making their Formula 1 debuts, and for Piquet it's also his home race, and it's also the debut race for Force India following their buyout of Spiker. McLaren are still reeling from the effects of the Spygate scandal and an intense rivalry between drivers Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton that ultimately cost both of them the title, which went to Kimi Raikkonen at Ferrari. Alonso has returned to Renault, and only four months after losing the title at Interlagos, both drivers are back here to begin the fight to take it back. Ferrari set the bar high, and in a race filled with drama, Massa takes pole and a very comfortable win in front of his home crowd. Alonso storms his way from sixth to an encouraging second, and Raikkonen finishes third. McLaren's first race is a struggle, as Hamilton and new teammate Heike Kovalainen qualify 4th and 5th and finish 5th and 7th, with Hamilton passing the Toyota of Timo Glock right at the very end, who has returned to Formula 1 as the incumbent GP2 champion three and a half years after racing for Jordan. Trulli picks up a point for Toyota in 8th. The talk of the town, however, is the Toro Rosso of Sebastian Vettel, who qualifies a career-best fifth and then passes Hamilton in the late stages of the race to match his career-best fourth, whereas his rookie teammate Bourdais qualifies an impressive ninth but slumps to 14th in the race. PK also has a debut to forget as he crashes out on the first lap. As race winner, Massa takes the initial lead in the Drivers' Championship, and Ferrari take the lead in the Constructors' Championship, with Renault second, McLaren third, Toro Rosso fourth, and Toyota fifth. The Asian leg then begins with the Chinese Grand Prix. Here, McLaren seem to find the pace they were sorely lacking in Brazil, as Hamilton goes fastest in all three qualifying sessions and takes an easy win. Massa and Raikkonen have finished second and third, but questions are being raised already about what's going on behind closed doors due to the apparent use of team orders to give second to Massa. Alonso has a strong fourth, BMW Sauber get their campaign on track with Nick Heifeld and Robert Kubica fifth and sixth, Glock finishes seventh, and PK makes up for his Interlagos Howler to finish eighth and give Renault a double points finish. Hamilton jumps from 5th in the standings to 2nd, Alonso goes 1 point ahead of Raikkonen, and Heidfeld and Kubica get themselves into the top 10. In the Constructors, Ferrari build up a 14 point lead over McLaren in 2nd, BMW Sauber jump up to 4th, and Toro Rosso drop down to 6th. At the Japanese Grand Prix, Hamilton takes pole again, alongside Raikkonen, but Massa struggles and is in 5th. Raikkonen takes the lead at the start, but Hamilton locks up and forces both of them wide, and Raikkonen into Kovalainen, and on the second lap, Hamilton is hit by Massa and put into a spin, and after a penalty finishes 12th. Massa later has a collision with Bourdais, and Bourdais gets penalised, denying him his first points, and Massa salvages 7th. 
At the front, it's Alonso and Kubica that take advantage of the squabbles, and Alonso becomes the third winner in three races, just ahead of Kubica in second and then Raikkonen in third. It's clear Renault have a strong car as Piquet claims fourth, Trulli keeps Toyota's point streak going in fifth, Vettel makes up for Bordet's downfall in sixth, and Mark Webber gets Red Bull on the board with eighth. This victory means Alonso takes the lead in the standings, three points ahead of Massa. Hamilton drops to fourth, and Piquet goes from 10th to 7th. Ferrari and Renault break ahead in the constructors, with Renault now 13 points ahead of McLaren, and McLaren only one point ahead of BMW Sauber. Japan is followed by the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix, Formula 1's first night race. It's Massa that takes pole, and is comfortably leading until PK crashes and brings out the safety car. All hell breaks loose in the pit lane, and Massa ends up at the back, and it's Alonso that comes out on top to take his second consecutive win. Nico Rosberg too benefits from the safety car and takes the first podium of his career, which could have been a win were it not for a penalty for pitting for fuel when the pit lane was closed. Hamilton finishes third, Glock finishes a career best fourth, Vettel drives to a strong fifth, Heidfeld is sixth, and Coulthard and Nakajima get their first points of the year with seventh and eighth. Massa finishes 13th, and Raikkonen crashes out of only a few laps to go, giving Ferrari a race to forget. As a result of this extremely convenient result, Alonso breaks into a 13-point lead over Massa, who is now tied on points with Hamilton, Vettel jumps to 5th, Glock jumps to 7th, and Rosberg to 8th. Renault also take a 1-point lead over Ferrari in the Constructors, who themselves are 16 points ahead of McLaren, and Williams overtake Red Bull. The European leg begins in Monza. The entire weekend is a washout, and it's Vettel who takes a shock pole, and Hamilton and Raikkonen are knocked out in Q2. Vettel goes on to take an historic win, Kovalainen and Kubica join him on the podium, Alonso is 4th, Heidfeld 5th, Massa is just 6th, Hamilton Salvage is 7th, Weber is 8th, and Raikkonen can only finish 9th. Bordet qualifies 4th, but after stalling at the start of the formation lap ends up 18th. Alonso increases his lead to 15 points, Vettel is now tied on points of Hamilton and just one point behind Massa and is beginning to look like a title contender. Because of him, Toloroso jump up to 5th in the Constructors. At the Belgian Grand Prix, Hamilton takes his third pole position of the year. On the second lap, he spins and loses the lead to Raikkonen. In the dying stages of the race, he closes back up, and with just over two laps to go, lunges at him at the bus stop chicane. He ends up cutting the chicane and lets Raikkonen through, only to then pass him again immediately at La Source. Rain then comes down, and both drivers have off on the penultimate lap before Raikkonen crashes out, making it his third pointless race in a row. Hamilton soldiers on to win, however, post-race he is given an extremely controversial 25-second time penalty that drops him to third, behind Massa and Heidfeld. Alonso makes a smart move to pits for wets on the final lap, and in doing so passes Bordet, Kubica and Vettel to finish fourth, and Bordet, who looks set for a podium, drops to seventh, but still scores his first points of the year. Weber finishes eighth, but concerns are being raised at Red Bull over their performance deficit to their junior team. There is also a lot of attention falling on Ferrari, as Raikkonen's form has gone off a cliff, and particularly after the use of team orders just two races in, people are wondering if he has lost the support of the team, or just a complete lack of motivation affecting his driving. Alonso's title lead decreases to 10 points, and Raikkonen drops behind both Kubica and Heidfeld to 7th. After six rounds, the only drivers without points are the Hondas of Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello, and the Force Indias of Giancarlo Fisichella and Adrian Sutil. Ferrari take the lead in the constructors from Renault by two points, and McLaren drops a fourth behind BMW Sauber. Next is the European Grand Prix, being held at the brand new Valencia Street Circuit. An uneventful race sees Massa take the win from pole with Hamilton second. Kubica is third, Kovalainen fourth, Trulli matches his season's best with fifth, an ever-consistent Vettel is sixth, Glock is seventh, and Rosberg eighth. It's a disaster for Raikkonen and Alonso, as Raikkonen suffers an engine failure and Alonso is taken out by Nakajima on the first lap. Massa and Alonso are now tied on points, but Massa takes the title lead on countback. Hamilton is only 7 points behind, and Vettel is still in the game, only 14 points behind. McLaren jumped from 4th to 2nd in the Constructors. 
At the Hungarian Grand Prix, Hamilton takes pole, but is passed by Massa in the pit lane and then gets a puncture, dropping him behind. Massa looks set to take a third consecutive win until his engine goes up in smoke with only a few laps to go, and it's Kovalainen who takes the first win of his career, becoming the sixth different winner in eight races. Glock finishes a career-best second, and Raikkonen gets his first points in five races with third. Alonso is fourth, Hamilton salvages fifth, Piquet scores his first points in five races with sixth, Trulli is seventh, Kubica eighth, and Vettel suffers his first retirement of the year and first non-points result since China. Alonso therefore retakes the lead in the driver's standings, Kovalainen leapfrogs Raikkonen and Heifeld up to sixth, and Trulli breaks into the double digits. McLaren are now only two points behind Ferrari in the constructors, and Toyota tie on points with Toro Rosso. At the German Grand Prix, Hamilton takes his first win in seven races, and Piquet gets a shock second after a clever pit stop during a safety car, leaving Massa third. Heidfeld is fourth, Kovalainen fifth, Raikkonen struggles in sixth, Kubica is seventh, Vettel begins to fall behind as he finishes eighth, despite the announcement that he will replace a retiring Coulthard at Red Bull in 2009, and Alonso languishes way down in eleventh. Hamilton takes the lead in the title fight for the first time, just one point ahead of Massa and two ahead of Alonso. Kovalainen surges to fifth, and Piquet jumps to tenth. McLaren now take a three-point lead over Ferrari in the constructors, as Renault begin to fall behind. At the British Grand Prix, Kovalainen gets his first pole position, but Hamilton really gets into his stride with an emphatic win in the pouring rain, while Massa's campaign begins to go off the rails and he spins several times and finishes 13th. Heidfeld gets his second podium of the year, and it's a surprise third for Barrichello, putting Honda on the board. Raikkonen is fourth, Kovalainen drops from pole to fifth, Alonso struggles to sixth, Trulli is seventh, Nakajima finishes eighth for the second time, Kubica spins off, and Vettel is taken out on the first lap and begins to concede his title chances now look remote. Hamilton breaks out into a nine-point lead over Alonso, Vettel drops behind Kovalainen, Heidfeld and Raikkonen to seventh, and Barrichello goes from 17th to 13th. McLaren go to 12 points ahead of Ferrari, Toyota overtake Toro Rosso, and Honda overtake Red Bull. Ferrari bounce back, however, at the French Grand Prix as they turn a front row lockout into a 1-2 finish, despite the fact that a cracked exhaust gives the win from Raikkonen to Massa. Meanwhile, Hamilton cuts turn 7 on the first lap and receives a drive-through penalty and finishes 10th. Trulli takes his first podium of the year, a consistent Kovalainen in his 4th, Kubica is 5th, Weber takes a season's best 6th, and Piquet narrowly beats a faltering Alonso to 7th. Massa is now just one point behind Hamilton, and Raikkonen surges to fourth, but is still 20 points behind. Ferrari's 1-2 now puts them back one point ahead of McLaren in the constructors, BMW Sauber start to close in on Renault, and Red Bull take eighth back from Honda. At the Canadian Grand Prix, Hamilton takes a dominant pole position, but then has another howler and rear-ends Raikkonen in the pit lane, taking them both out. Pit stop blunders mean Massa can't capitalise and finishes fifth, and neither can Alonso who spins off, and it's BMW Sauber who come through to take a 1-2, with Kubica taking his first win. Coulthard takes a surprise third, giving Red Bull their first podium of the year, Glock is fourth, Trulli sixth, Barrichello takes a surprise seventh, and Vettel just about holds on to eighth. Massa retakes the lead in the standings by three points from Hamilton, and Kubica and Heidpel jump up to fourth and fifth respectively. Ferrari extend to five points ahead of McLaren, BMW Sauber jump to third and begin to look serious, only 20 points behind Ferrari, and Red Bull takes seventh from Williams. Next is the Monaco Grand Prix. Massa takes an unexpected pole position, and it looks as if he is going to run away with the title as Hamilton hits the wall early on and gets a puncture. He soldiers on, however, and through clever strategy takes the lead and the win, while Massa drops to third behind Kubica. Elsewhere, Satil, who all year has been running around at the back, gets himself up to a sensational fourth and looks set to take his and Force India's first points of the year until he is rear ended by Raikkonen, taking him out of the race and putting Raikkonen out of the points once again. Instead, Weber takes a season's best fourth, Vettel drives strongly to fifth, Barrichello seems to be finding his form and finishes sixth, Nakajima finishes a season's best seventh, and Kovalainen in his eighth. Alonso is a lowly tenth, having scored only nine points in the past seven races. 
With five rounds remaining, Piquet, Barrichello, Weber, Rosberg, Coulthard, Nakajima, Bordet, Button, Fisichella and Satil are all mathematically eliminated from the title fight. Hamilton retakes the lead by one point from Massa, and Kubica is now just one point behind Alonso in third. Williams, Honda and Force India are also mathematically eliminated from the Constructors' title fight. McLaren and Ferrari are now tied on points, but McLaren is ahead on countback, and PMW Sauber are now just 18 points behind. At the Turkish Grand Prix, Toro Rosso, who are bewildered by the drop-in performance of their car since the early part of the season, make a drastic decision to shelve it and run a B-spec model of their 2007 car instead. Here, Massa recovers from Monaco to take a dominant pole and win, while Hamilton is second and Raikkonen a third. Kubica and Heidfeld take damage limitation to finish 4th and 5th, Alonso refines some form to finish 6th, Weber is 7th, and Rosberg gets his first point in 7 races to finish 8th. Toro Rosso, however, seem to have made a fatal mistake as Bordet's suspension breaks and Vettel finishes 17th and last. Vettel, Glock and Trulli are now mathematically eliminated from the title fight. Massa retakes the lead from Hamilton by one point, Kubica takes third from Alonso by one point, and Raikkonen takes fifth from Heidfeld. Toyota, Toro Rosso and Red Bull are now mathematically eliminated from the Constructors title fight. Ferrari also retake the Constructors lead from McLaren by 8 points, and BMW Sauber are now 25 points behind. At the Spanish Grand Prix, Super Aguri, who have been scrounging for funds all year, are true to their word and return to the grid for the final four rounds. Here, it's Raikkonen who takes pole, and at long last takes his first win of the year. In a huge turnaround, Alonso qualifies second and looks set for his first podium since his win at Singapore, until the engine dies. Massa finishes second, despite imploring to have Raikkonen let him take the win, and Hamilton takes third. Kubica is fourth, Weber takes his third consecutive points finish with fifth, Button at long last gets in the points with sixth, Nakajima drives well to seventh, and Trulli is eighth. Super Aguri in their return see Takuma Sato finish 13th and last and Anthony Davidson retire with a damaged radiator. Raikkonen, Alonso, Heidfeld and Kovalainen are now mathematically eliminated from the title fight. Massa is now three points ahead of Hamilton and Raikkonen takes fourth from Alonso. Renault are now mathematically eliminated from the Constructors' title fight. Ferrari increased their lead over McLaren to 20 points. At the Bahrain Grand Prix, Massa puts one hand on the title as he takes the win, despite Kubica taking the first pole position of his career, and Hamilton rear-ends Alonso on the second lap and finishes outside the points in 13th. Raikkonen is second, Kubica and Heidfeld are third and fourth, Kovalainen is fifth, Trulli takes sixth, Weber 7th and Rosberg 8th. For the second race in a row, Vettel is knocked out on the first lap. Kubica is now mathematically eliminated from the title fight, leaving it a two-horse race between Massa and Hamilton, which looks inevitable for Massa as he has a 13-point lead with two rounds remaining. BMW Sauber as well are now mathematically eliminated from the Constructors title fight too, leaving that a two-horse race between Ferrari and McLaren, with Ferrari 34 points ahead with 36 points still up for grabs. At the Malaysian Grand Prix, Ferrari lock out the front row, with Massa on pole, and both Kovalainen and Hamilton on row 2 are given grip penalties for blocking drivers in qualifying and drop to 8th and 9th respectively. Massa and Raikkonen break ahead of the rest of the field, with Hamilton on a recovery drive, trying to keep his title hopes alive, but Raikkonen takes the lead from Massa in the pit stops, and Hamilton has a slow stop that drops him to 11th. Massa, however, only needs to beat Hamilton or have him finish 6th or lower to be champion. However, yet another spanner is thrown into the works, as on lap 30, Massa clumsily spins off into the gravel and beaches the car, in a scene reminiscent of Hamilton at the Chinese Grand Prix the previous year. Raikkonen wins, Kubica is second, Kovalainen in third, in only his third podium of the year, Trulli is fourth, and Hamilton finishes fifth, meaning the title will go down to the wire. Heidfeld is sixth, Weber seventh, and Alonso eighth. Massa's title lead is reduced to 9 points over Hamilton, and Raikkonen is just 1 point behind Kubica in 3rd. Raikkonen's win means Ferrari are crowned Constructors champions for 2008, but there is still the driver's title to wrap up. The 2008 season reaches its finale in Australia. Regardless of what happens, there will be a new driver's champion. 
The ball is in Massa's court, as he is 9 points ahead of Hamilton, meaning he can be champion by finishing 8th or higher, whereas Hamilton can only be champion if he wins the race, with Massa outside of the points. Hamilton does everything he needs to on Saturday by taking his 7th pole position of the season, and Massa qualifies a safe 4th. The race provides us with one of the most chaotic season finales in Formula 1 history. Five drivers are taken out on the first lap, and Massa spins in all of this but is able to continue, now in last, something which would be replicated four years later. He slowly makes progress through the field, until colliding with Coulthard at Turn 1 and taking Coulthard out. This brings the safety car out, but during it, Massa's engine dies, meaning there's nothing left he can do to secure the title. Hamilton, who has been comfortably leading the race, is not champion yet, as he still has to finish and win the race. He has Kovalainen behind him covering him off from Raikkonen, and at the safety car restart, in his desperation, Raikkonen lunges at Kovalainen for second but runs onto the gravel trap and drops to last, meaning at this point there is little beyond a mechanical failure that can stop Hamilton being champion. His car holds true, however, and Hamilton drives a faultless race to take his fifth win of the year to be crowned champion for 2008 by just one point, and all Massa can do is watch from the Ferrari pit wall. Heidfeld finishes second for the fourth time that year, Rosberg takes an opportunistic third, Alonso drives well for fourth after a wretched second half of the year, Kovalainen is fifth after putting the pit limiter on by accident on the main straight, Nakajima drives recklessly but takes sixth, Bourdais, in another stroke of bad luck, is running 4th when his engine dies, but he is still classified 7th, and Raikkonen also loses his engine and is classified 8th. That single point means he just takes 3rd from Kubica, Alonso holds on to 5th by 1 point from Heidfeld, and Nakajima and Bourdais both gain a place. For so many drivers and teams, 2008 was a season of two halves, and you can see this in a whole new different light with the race order reversed. The two most notable drivers in this regard are Alonso and Vettel. Both of them have immensely strong starts to the season, as can be seen in this chart, with Alonso leading the championship until almost the halfway mark, but tail off in the second half. Another thing that characterises these two is their teammates, who give them little to no competition and also little to no help in the constructors' battle. The reverse is true for teams such as BMW, Sauber, Red Bull and Honda, however. This way round, their first half is weak, but they come back stronger in the second half. BMW Stauber in particular come back so strong that they briefly look like dark horses for the Constructors title. Red Bull make good progress towards overtaking Toro Rosso, but not enough, and Honda go from being absolutely nowhere to brief flashes of brilliance. At the front however, this puts a very interesting spin on the battle between Hamilton and Massa. For every person, including Massa himself apparently, that say Massa was robbed in Singapore, there are just as many saying Hamilton was robbed at Spa. This way round, they spend the entire season within 10 points of one another, until Massa breaks 13 points ahead with two rounds remaining, only to score no more. Neither driver was really able to get into a stride, and were both wildly inconsistent, making numerous errors of their own as well as being victims of pit lane calamities. What does become clear however, particularly with the chart, is just how costly Australia and Malaysia were for Massa. The Constructors' battle is weighted very heavily in favour of Ferrari, despite the internal sabotage against Raikkonen that took place in what is now the first half of the season, check this video out for more info on that, which mainly explains how by Spa he was already 25 points behind Massa, and seemingly on course for one of the worst title defences in Formula 1 history. Ferrari were helped by the fact that Kovalainen was a totally inadequate second driver at McLaren, who single-handedly cost McLaren the Constructors' title, and this way round has an extremely slow start until his surprise win. Overall, if the race order had been this way around, I'd take it. It gives us just as a dramatic season opener, an utterly chaotic finale, and a title battle which is just as unpredictable, with an equally unprecedented conclusion. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter slash X, Instagram, TikTok and threads at brook underscore F1. Also join my Discord server and subscribe to my Spotify page, links in the description. A huge shout out and thank you as ever to my Patreon subscribers. Do subscribe to my Patreon if you want early access to audio only versions of each video, as well as a few videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up. And I'll see you all next time.